showed that this boy went through several um, abuse and, you know, um, brutality, beating. And he kept speaking out, but nobody was listening to him. And that was where I felt really guilty. For me, as a mother, I felt like, oh my God, because I know, I mean, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> so I'm like, we all need to just come out and make sure. Because one thing that got my attention was the fact that he had filed a petition and his petition was not looked into. Why was his petition not looked into? We Hello guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And well, welcome to this Facebook page and YouTube channel. And because sales you come, help me share this video, make me talk small. That's another one waste of time. I'm going to give you a chance to listen to Iyabo Ojo. Maybe we're going to hear this a new voice which used to bring out Eko, sending this mobile RIP and the justice we won't get from Mubad. We're going to hear everything which you talk about inside this place. When I know say Mubad, fair talk, I'm saying, man. In crime, meet a lot of people made their help. And this poor fail to help this guy. And now Iyabo Ojo confirmed for this video, say, Mubad cried to them, but they don't give a listening ear. None of them helped this guy. Even when they know say this guy was being bullied, tortured, none of them come outside help this guy. And I know the reason why Yabo Ojo constantly make this video again because now we see a video where they go around now. This a bully video which they talk say man, she not bully her. If she not like you, she can bully you. So she come outside now, come talk say she feel pain now. Now not she feel pain. Say this guy talk to them, they don't listen. Even Yabo Ojo fiance for UK. Mubad talked to that man. That man was thinking maybe Mubad is a cuckoo. -cuc. They don't give Mubad ear. But now, the reality don't hit them. They don't feel the heat for, but they don't feel the pain. Say, man, ah. So this guy was going through pain. Then about to lie on him. Tell everybody for the industry, say, man, Mubad was not sound. Mubad was mentally healed. A lot of things they said towards this guy, but all was lie. Now, Yabo Joe come outside now. Come big, bring out the statement. Say, man, she feel pain, which not fit to help this guy. I wish now the our own children they bully the way they bully this guy. They see how the video will come outside, and that's how they say, Ah, so this guy, you see that industry, eh? they fail to the act where something they happen to person. But when it don't happen, they'll call the form love. Say, man, they love you, they won't help you. Now, be the fake love of the show. When I listen to Yabo, you, but this one a medicine after death. I won't just plan for now. Make no say these people know what thing that they do, but they go pretend as if they don't know what thing that they do. Just listen to what she said. They will come back. Please do me a favor. Share this video. I beg you. Share the video. Only about getting justice for Mobad. Mobad is gone, and we can never bring him back. But his memories can live on, and he was supposed to be a legacy. You know, to start a. Uh, a legacy for the younger ones that are coming into the industry to be protected you know and um, to also be able to have a voice so that whenever they are going through um, any situation they might get justice because for me we know that definitely he died and um, the reason the cause of his death was not clear that was why we insisted that his body be exhumed so that we don't point um, wrong fingers, you know. But we cannot take away the fact that all those videos that were being released, those pictures, showed that this boy went through several um, abuse and, you know, um, brutality, beating. And he kept speaking out, but nobody was listening to him. And that was where I felt really guilty. For me, as a mother, I felt like, oh my God, because I know, I mean, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> so I'm like, we all need to just come out and make sure. Because one thing that got my attention was the fact that he had filed a petition and his petition was not looked into. Why was his petition not looked into? We needed to get facts. I was shocked at the way he was quickly buried and at the manner at which he was buried. Do you understand? So everything just seemed so un unclear. And I don't know, I don't think I was the only one who felt that way. His spirit was not resting, you know, and everybody was almost like being tormented, you know, by his spirit. And everybody was, you know, there was so much going on. And I just felt like, you know what, let me use my foundation. Because, I mean, when he died, I was in America. When he died, I was in New York. And... Um, 
when I heard about it, I was like on my way back to Nigeria. I think I got back to Nigeria like two days or three days after, and I had to fly down to Abuja. So while all that was going on, I kept checking on to see what was the next mood, what, what, what were they saying, what are people doing, what's happening, because we can't have all these allegations put out there, this evidence put out there, and then there's no positive response to it. And social media is there to create awareness, but that does not enforce the law. You need to do the proper things to be able to enforce the law. You need to make complaints. You need to do certain things to enforce the law. And I've, I was waiting on that to see if anybody was going to take that step. And so when I saw that it wasn't happening, I just felt like, okay, you know what, Yabo. <laughs> I knew it was not going to be easy. I knew I was going to come under such um, attacks. Do you understand? Because I knew that there was a lot of situations going on on my own part. I had the Babai Jesha saga where a lot of people still hold me responsible for having to find justice for a girl child that was molested, right? I knew I had the political angle of it where I decided to follow my heart and support LP and I knew a lot of APC people were angry with me. But I had to put all that aside because we're talking about a child. Eh? We're talking about a young boy whose life was cut short. We're talking about a... You know, a boy who went through so much and everyone kind of neglected or were not listening to him because why? Um, the, the same person he was pointing fingers on was, was our celebrity, our favorite. You know, so it, it, for me, I just felt like, you know what, Yabo, I knew a lot was, was things, I knew a lot was going to go down, but I was like, you know what, let me use my voice and use my foundation, you know, to seek justice for this boy justice for mubad was already ongoing as i when i came up people were already doing the hashtag justice for mubad but if we want to point fingers let's point fingers right let's know exactly what happened to him but that does not take away the fact that he was being brutalized so he was being beaten he went through a lot of um emotional trauma he complained he just did not complain only, he did not only complain about samlari on eramali he complained about the police he complained about ndla do you understand his complaints were so many and i felt like this was an opportunity for me to use my voice to create a bigger awareness and also to enforce it do you understand and it's not something i can do alone because when you try when you when you try to want to correct a narrative that you know it's going to affect um a lot of people it is not just a single battle it's a battle that has to be very collective and i just felt okay let me lead and let me have people follow on with me and then we can get justice for mobad get his realities get um everyone that is part of whatever happened to him even until his death do you understand to pay for whatever it is they did wrong sending them to prison you know it's not going to bring more bad back but at least it will give hope hope to the younger ones also who are also aspiring you know to be great in life so that they would know that there's a law in this country that works because unfortunately most times our laws in this country don't work and but they don't work because we do not collectively join hands to enforce it we always look away. Kilo kami konshabi me konsharami is not my own. It's not my business, and that's why we are where we are today in Nigeria. You are still there because we will always look away. It's not my problem. I, I don't want to get involved. And look at um, Black Lives Matters when it happened in America. You can see the way they they trooped out. They came out and they stood. They stood with one voice and fought, and he got justice. Hey, Abu, you sorry guys to cut to pause on there. He said, look at the life of Black Lives Matter in America. The same thing we did in, America, in Nigeria. What happened? No. We came out for Mubad. What happened? Very black, dark boy, Mumu boy, joined the police to end our movement. Yes. Everybody came out in mass for Mubad. What happened? They stopped the movement. They said they want to do it in a lawful way. But what is going on today now? They ended everything. Because we wanted to fight to get justice with the crowd out there. But because very black dark boy think he knows it all. He said the police will do their job. We should give them a chance. But what is happening today? Everything we are still waiting. Up to this minute, no autopsy result, nothing, nothing. But it is because everybody in America come together. Because the law work in that place. That's where they fight and they got justice in America. But Nigeria was supposed to be like that. 
What happened? All this fake, fake, fake nigga, according to Blo uh, Bobad, fake friends and fake niggas, they spoiled everything. They didn't allow us to get justice in this case. But now you are coming and telling us that what happened in America. I beg you, what are your strengths? So it's, but in Nigeria, it's always a sorry case because it's either somebody that you have um, personal issues with will come up and say, you know what, I want to counter her. I want to counter him just because forgetting that there's a purpose. And this will bring me back to the matter of Gislova. Gislova wrote something about um, one of my friends then, you know, and I slid into the, um, Gislova's DM. And I said, ah, this thing you wrote about this person, I don't think it's true, you know. And just like, oh, you're always defending your own friend, da, 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 da. it's true, all the information. I said, ah, okay. But if this is what you believe, you know what? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not happy with this and that's it. Do you understand? I just, because I was, I know my friend and I felt like this did not happen, right? And just love, I was like, eh, hey, please, please, please. I don't like you coming here every time to be telling me what is true, what is not true, blah, 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 blah. And I, okay, fine. A um, few weeks or months later, just love, I was coming for a set pastor. And um, my name got involved in that because obviously the rumors has always been going on. And then there was this particular um, article or um, story that a fake page opened and wrote some certain rubbish about me uh, like the pastor bringing a prostitute to my own home and me the prostitute was I was afraid to do a threesome and I said don't worry even if he wants to do a threesome with my daughter you know I wouldn't mind I don't know do you understand and when then back then when we tracked that um, fake page we found out that it was a fake page we even had to track the, the picture of the lady that was used to find out that she didn't even know anything about it she was not part of it so somebody somewhere just got a fake page put out a stupid um post do you understand and this happened many years ago now fast forward to was it last year or two years ago when gislova brought up that article and posted it and i saw people brushing down to my page and saying a whole lot of rubbish do you understand and i was really hungry with gislova at that time i was like why did he say anything? Because you know, sometimes there are some things you just leave aside, not because you don't want to talk, but because you just feel like this is it. Now, when um, Princess was having, um, I think she was interviewing one of my um, colleagues in the English industry, and someone called my attention to it, and I called Pr uh, Princess. And I'm like, Princess, what's, why is my name coming up in this interview? I don't want to have anything to do with this. You know, and I think at the time when I called her, I didn't know whether she was live or doing anything. I just called her, right? Guys, I posted that I don't want to listen to the next talk because that's not my business with their problem, you know. But the issue is, you see, these people, they know their own. The reason I brought this video for you guys to listen is because Iyabo just said, Mubad cried out to them. They refused to listen. They kept deaf ear. They acted as if they don't know something was going on with this guy. But today, this guy, this guy is gone. But all of them are out there, try or cry or pretending to act as if they love this guy. None of them love me bad. For real, none of them love me bad. So if no one give an example, don't use America or this Western world to give an example because the law in this country is working. So your law in Nigeria, if your law in Nigeria want to work all of you got to come together and work in one accord because we were, we were we were almost there to get justice on our own way what happened when that black boy came out yeah i stopped the protest you guys wanted to do something you wanted to hijack nigeria hijack nigeria how I stopped the protest. I was the person who put an end to the protest. Yes, no protest, no this, no that. But we are trying to get protest. We are trying to get justice from a bad. When it happened in America, where they gave RIP to George Floyd, what happened? The world shaked. Just the same way they did to Mubad. The world shaked. Because the, the manner they gave that guy RIP was so, was so horrible. Guy pleaded before he be a RIP. Just the same way 
will bow plead there before it be a RIP. But everybody came out all over the world. We protested. Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya, Cameroon, everywhere, Europe. We protested to make sure just Floyd got justice. And he got justice we all protested for. But when it came to Nigeria, what happened? Oga we know Oga. Mama we know Mama. Brother we know Brother. They shut down this case because he got potential people on this case that they don't want justice on this issue. They shut down the case. The very black dad boy came out to distract everybody. And people was thinking this guy was saying the right thing. And nobody knew this guy was distracting everybody with his own statements. That was what happened in the very dark man issue. The guy distracted everybody. He came out with DNA. No doubt, we're going to do the DNA, no problem. But the issue was, we were supposed to, you know, go after the first statement we brought out. Justice! It was our first statement. We need justice. What happened before they brought in DNA? Now we are pursuing two rats at the same time. That's why we had this massive confusion out there. But Iyabo Oje came out now, trying to defend yourself, trying to tell to yourself, oh, you are feeling sorry. You guys are not feeling any sorry from the bad. You guys know what you guys were doing. The statement she made, she said, they were dragging our favor rights. You guys heard that clear. She said, they were dragging their favor rights. Who is their favorite? Neramali is their favorite. The same very dark black boy who came out to say, Neramali, Samali, these guys are guilty. They don't have evidence. He will bring out evidence. But the same guy came out to tell us, Neramali and Samali are not guilty. No evidence. But the evidence are there. The same thing that Yabo Julio said, these guys are our what? Favorites. So they try always to make sure they protected this guy, but they pretend to us that they are fighting justice. We all know these guys are not fighting justice. The only people who are fighting justice in this case is me and you. It's me and you. They only pretend, they only catch out with this case. All of them catch out with this case. Now look at what is going on now. Nigeria police, they said we all need to step down. We should allow the police to do their job. Till now, we are still waiting for the DNA. Not DNA, the autopsy. There's no result about the autopsy. We are still waiting. So what's going on? So Yabo Joe, you guys should just, you know, pack one side. Because you guys destroyed this issue. You, very dark black boy, Yabo Joe, just love i don't know that platform just love our cutie juice you guys destroyed this movement of justice from about by involving the police by telling the police they're going to do their job as to speak the police are not doing anything the police don't even know how to investigate an issue like this they don't even know their job they are telling you that they are investigating they are doing this they are doing that but nothing is being done we are still in the dark. We are still asking. If not for me and for other bloggers and maybe for Yekudi and many others, we have some ladies in America who are fighting so hard to make sure we get justice in this case. We have some in UK. I'm not talking about those ones who are fighting on, uh, on, on TikTok. I'm not talking about those ladies. I'm talking about real people who are spending their money they are not collecting money from people. They are spending their own money just to get justice in this case. America, I know of a lady. She's a diehard fan. She spending her own money just to make sure she get justice on Mobad's case. She don't even know Mobad, but because of the love she has for this guy, she needs justice. The same way in UK, people want justice. But you see Nigerians? Nigeria people live in Nigeria? They don't need justice, but they are pretending they want justice. They don't need it. If not for me, for you that is committing, 
that want justice. Others are just pretending. They don't want justice. So in Yabonju, you guys should just pack one side. Many of you, many of you have compromised this whole issue because of what you guys are catching out from it. We all know, we all know this issue. I will end this video, but I just want to let you guys know that justice for Mobad, we're going to get justice. Justice, justice will prevail. Wumi, Samlari, Neramali, Darusha, Adura, Mama Mubad, all of you will pay. I'm saying it, all of you will pay. All of you will pay for what you guys did to this innocent dude, Mubad. You are going to pay for it. You are going to pay for it. We will stand to get justice in this issue. Justice for Mubad, justice for others out there. Yes, justice for Mubad is justice for others out there. I end this video, I peace. Help to share this video. So, do so, God bless you. See you guys in my next video. Stay safe, guys, and bye bye.